Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a snow owl with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. I'm going to go over the colors that I used for this tutorial. I used the color called blue gray. If you don't have blue gray, you can use any gray and add a little bit of blue into it. I used burnt umber, titanium white, Mars black, cad orange hue, primary yellow. I also used a color called light blue violet, which is not pictured right now. And for the brushes, I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush, a number eight round brush, and a number four round brush. These are brushes that are in the Princeton Velvet Touch brush pack. And of course you can use any brushes and you can substitute colors to a different brand. I am going to be demonstrating this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and this tutorial actually use, utilizes a traceable template. So you're going to need to print this out on two sheets of paper and tape it together. If you want to draw the owl yourself, you're welcome to, but this tutorial is going to be uh, focusing on adding all the texture and details in the owl. So we're going to be using a template this time around. So you place your little graphite paper underneath your template and you position it on the canvas. And when you trace, your design will transfer. So we're going to be doing that step after we painted the background. So I'm going to be showing you how to paint the background first, and then we'll do the template or drawing after we paint the background. So let's go ahead and load our palette with three colors, titanium white, light blue gray, and light blue violet. Go ahead and load your brush in the titanium white and we're gonna start in the upper left part of our sky and paint a large white circle. So this sky is a blended background that uh, radiates and blends around a circle. This could either be the sun or the moon, however you want to interpret it. We wanna paint about a five inch circle. So um, it's not a thin layer of paint, it's relatively thick because we're gonna be using that white to blend our next color. Then without rinsing the brush, add a little bit of your light blue violet and a little bit of your blue gray to your brush. A little bit more blue gray than light blue violet at this point. And um, add that to the outer part of the circle. You want to be very gentle at first with this. You don't want to introduce too much of that gray blue color in the center. We want to keep the center part bright and white and we're going to just paint in very loose strokes going in a circular direction, blending it gently outward. So I'm going in a circular direction, but I'm also being very loose about this. I'm not trying to over blend it. I want to see some of those streaks of that color and the white, but that it doesn't need to be blended all the way. As you're working your way out, we're adding more blue to our brush. So I'm utilizing more of that light blue violet. I'm adding that into the sky area so it gets slightly darker and more gray outwards. But then I can grab some of more, some more of my titanium white and kind of blend that too. So as I go on this outer part, some of my strokes are going kind of angular. So I'm trying to blend it, but being I'm trying to be very loose and kind of abstract about it so it doesn't have to blend all the way. It also doesn't have to stay in that circular direction. I'm trying to express this snowy day um, so um, the colors would be radiating around that sun or moon but kind of outwards it might be windy so our colors might be going in more of an angular direction instead of just circular. Go ahead and add more gray to your brush as you work your way out. You want to leave a gap towards the bottom of the canvas. So it's about a four to five inch gap where our ground is going to be, but that doesn't have to be exact. You are welcome to use a little bit more of that light blue violet if you want to bring out more of a bluish purplish color in the sky. If you like more of a gray look in the sky, you can use more of the blue gray color. Um, so that's up to you. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this purplish a light blue violet color kind of towards the bottom gives it kind of a pretty blue hue and it mixes very nicely with that blue gray color so i left about a four to five inch gap on the bottom of the canvas and in this next step 
we are actually going to paint our snowy bottom. So you don't need to wait for this to dry, but you do need to wipe your brush off or completely rinse it. Um, both ways work, but I'm going to just take a towel and wipe all that excess paint off my brush. So yeah, there'll be a little bit of blue gray left on the brush and that's okay because our ground area is not solid white. It is lighter than the sky. It's mostly white, but there's a little bit of the blue shadow in the snow as well. So let's start with just our white for now. So load your brush in the titanium white and go ahead and start painting your snowy ground area. So let's just kind of start at the bottom and just fill this in and we may need to add more white to our palette if needed and bring it up into the sky area and this is going to end up blending because our sky isn't dry yet and that's kind of the point i wanted this to blend anyway we can use the tip of the brush to kind of define where that horizon line is but that horizon line pretty much just kind of blends up into the sky and sort of disappears so it's kind of a very loose, hilly area at the top. Go ahead and add some more white to my palette. Grab more of that white. And just define this top area and let that kind of blend in with the sky. So some of that gray is going to go down into that top part of that snowy land area and make it look like it's kind of fading away, kind of drag some of that brown down into the middle part of the snow area. And on the bottom of our snow area, we're going to do this on purpose. We're going to grab a little bit of that light blue violet, add that to the very, very bottom of the snow area, and let that blend up into the rest of the snow. To get that light blue violet to blend, you may have to add more white to your brush so that it becomes lighter. And you should only add a teeny bit of that light blue violet to your brush on the bottom. So we have a snowy area. It's a little bit shadowy at the bottom and shadowy at the top and lighter in the middle. For this next step, we need to let our entire background dry. So you have the option of drawing the snow owl yourself or you can print out the template. So I will be using the template this time around. You can print it out on two pieces of paper for the 11 by 14. I have this sized exactly the way you need it for this canvas size. And we have graphite paper below it. So I'm actually going to position it a little bit down and a little bit more to the right. So it's not exactly centered the way it is on the paper. I wanted to kind of lower it so part of the bottom of the post gets cut off. Um, you can do the same or if you want it to fit exactly on the canvas the way the traceable drawing is, you're welcome to do it that way as well. But I kind of cut off maybe a half inch of that post on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pencil. Do you use a regular pencil for this and you just trace the design. And that's how we get these traceable templates to transfer to the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and put this in fast forward and um, I will let you know what the next steps are going to be after our template is applied to the canvas. When I'm working with the template, I'll often lift off to make sure that the design is transferring. You wanna press relatively firm, but it may not show up super dark depending on how firm you're pressing. And because we're using a stretched canvas, um, there's air below it, so it doesn't go too firm. And you don't wanna to press too hard because you don't wanna poke a hole in anything, but just enough to where you can see the design and the painting background is light enough to where this will show up. So I'm actually going to draw over this to make it darker, and I'm gonna use a ruler to help get that post to be nice and vertical. You can do the same too, so if your template ended up being kind of slanted where the post is, just get a ruler and just kind of line it up vertically to a pair perpendicular to the edge of the canvas. I'm just gonna go over this drawing kind of fast so that it shows up better on the camera. You can do the same if you want. So if you like it 
if you want it to show up a little bit darker, you can go back over the drawing. Um, but if it's light, it should be um, visible enough to be able to paint it in. You'll be able to see your lines if it's not super dark. On the written directions of this tutorial, I actually have the dimensions for this owl. So if you're drawing it yourself, you can use the dimensions of the how high the owl is and the spacing of it to help you with the drawing portion. And we're gonna go ahead and start painting the owl in next. So I started with the eyes and I have primary yellow and cad orange hue. So yellow and orange onto my palette. You only need a very, very tiny amount of those two colors because that's the only spot they show up in this painting are on the eyes. I'm gonna use a number four round brush. So if you find this number four round brush too big, you can always switch to a smaller brush or even use a paint pen for this step, tiny detail. So we're gonna load just the tip of that brush in the yellow, and we're gonna go ahead and paint the inner part of the eyes. So everything around the black circle part, all the inner parts of the eye, yellow. And before that yellow dries, we want a teeny tiny bit of orange on our brush and just kind of pick a part of the eye and um, blend it gently with the yellow. So I did the outer parts on the right and the left of the eye, and I did a little bit of orange, and the orange just kind of slightly blends with the yellow. So we have the eye that's kind of a two-toned yellow that blended with the orange. And that's it for the inner part of the eye. We'll add another layer of like a white highlight later, but that's just the simpleness of painting the inside of the eye. So then, after you do that, grab your black. So this is Mars Black that I loaded on my palette little bit of black on the very, very tip of the brush. Again, this is a very fine detail. You're welcome to use a paint pen or a tiny detail brush if this four round just isn't working for you. So just the little black circle is all I'm painting next for the inner part for the eye. So the little pupil of the eye, black circle. Then we want to really get that paint right on the tip of that brush because we want to go ahead and outline the outer edge of the eye. So this is also a step where you can use a smaller brush or even a paint pen. So you want to just go ahead and outline the outer part of the eye. So it's in the outer part of where the drawing is. So it's making that line a little bit thicker, but on the outer part, I'm not applying black paint over any of the yellow or the orange that I just painted. It's only going on the outer part. There's a little bit of thickness to it as well. And then we can go ahead and paint the beak in. So just taking that black and filling in that shape with a solid coat of that black, still using the number four round brush. You wanna make sure the tip, the bottom tip of it is nice and pointed. And then next we are going to be using a number eight round brush and the color titanium white. We're gonna fill in the first layer of the owl feathers. So it's a snow owl. The majority of it is white, but there's some gray in there as well. And then we have the black speckles, which will be fun to do. But the first thing we're gonna do is apply our white layer. And we're gonna do this. This is the number eight round brush. So the nice thing about this brush is it's got that little point to it and we can use that to create kind of this feather texture. So I'm gonna start um, above the eyes, kind of in the middle area above the eyes. And I'm going to do two sets of kind of these curved feather strokes that are going the opposite direction. And I'm using mostly the tip of the brush to create the little feathered stroke. So that's gonna kind of set the direction of the feathers on the head area. And I'm gonna repeat that, do the same thing, but they're gonna curve around the eyes. So these feathers are going this way, these ones are going that way, they kind of part. And then when we get to the top of the head, it kind of contours and goes in a curved direction. So I'm actually kind of outlining this head area up here. Um, it's important to note that when we are filling this in, we don't need to 100% cover all of that gray. In fact, some of that gray showing through is kind of helping give the feather texture. So up here, 
using just the tip of the brush to go around the eye down here. This one curves down and under the eye. And then this one too curves around the eye. You want to get that white as close as possible to your black outline without painting over the black. So you don't want that to smear, especially if that black is still wet. I'm going to go down and I'm going to kind of just outline this back, putting a little bit more pressure on my brush. I love this number eight brown brush because it does thick and thin strokes so I can control that. So right there I did thick by pressing down on all the bristles and then I can do thin by just using the tip of the bristles. So here I'm just kind of loosely filling in the bottom um, shape of the tail feather. I need more white on my palette. There's a lot of white in this painting. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the head area. So these feathers over here are actually going to, it's going to kind of look like he has a um, kind of a mustache in front above his beak. These feathers are going to go around and downwards around the beak. And then we'll fill those in. Um, this area is actually going to have a little bit of a gray color, but we will add that later right now. It's just the white layer. So I'm just kind of gently kind of making these um, short strokes, doing one stroke at a time, just stroking it downwards, filling the owl in. And you want to kind of pay attention to your wing shape. So for the wing shape, I just use the tip of the brush to outline that shape so I have the shape in and then I'm going to do long strokes to fill this in. So in the head area we did short strokes, um, the wing area will do long strokes to kind of differentiate that and get the direction of those feathers in there. So again, I do have a lot of that background showing through and that's okay. I don't need to worry about getting it 100% solid filled right now. I'm working on the the bot the talon area. So he has some feathers that are kind of um, overlapping the the talons. And then we have kind of the belly region. And again, we'll do those. Let's make these strokes kind of go differently. So these ones are going to go curving in a horizontal direction. I'm holding my brush to where I'm using a lot of the thick part of the bristles to create that stroke. So you can see the direction kind of switched. So that's going to help us distinguish the belly area versus the, the side wing area. We did those long kind of diagonal strokes. I'm trying not to lose the shape. So we want to have some of our pencil drawings still visible so we can um, kind of see the direction. So right here it did end up covering parts of that, um, but we want to still kind of fill it in in the direction of that shape. So right here, those tail feathers are kind of going diagonal. So you can see just by creating different directions of the strokes, we can still kind of distinguish the head area, the side wing area, and the belly area. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of a detail work. So I switched back to number four round brush and I'm grabbing white just on the tip of that. So I want to do a little bit of white highlight on the colored part of the owl's eye. So on the bottom part, I did a little white curvy stroke. And then on the black pupil part, I did one little white dot just in the center top part of the eyes and you can see just by adding those two little white elements to it, it brings out some more detail in the owl's eyes and i mentioned earlier that this part around his beak is going to be a little bit gray so let's mix gray on our palette we mixed um a little a little bit of black with the white you only need a teeny bit of black to make that gray and let's just go over the, the small feathered strokes around the beak, create little curved feather strokes, create kind of a gray area in the beak region. 
my favorite part of this painting was actually the little splotches. So I recommend um, looking at a picture of a snow owl and just kind of observing the splotches, the little black splotches and kind of the pattern that they create. So on the top of the head, it kind of curves downward to a point and the splotches are kind of smaller towards the eyes and then kind of get bigger towards the top and they kind of fade away. So all I'm doing is loading my brush, tip of the brush in the black and I'm using some of that gray too. So not all of the little dots have to be solid black. We can create some variation by making some of them kind of a medium to dark gray, but you're adding that color just to the tip of the brush and you're kind of pressing and making a small stroke. So he's got the little black dots on the top of his head. And then I went in and added some more feather texture to around his beak. So around here, using that gray color. under the eyes a little bit. And then I also, so around the sides of that, the face, I also used a little bit of white kind of overlapping that a bit. Um, I also used the black to kind of define our wing area. So we can go and sort of outline where his wing is. So we can start about right here, goes down. So that's where that the pencil drawing is the side of his wing. And then we have some lines on the bottom area of the wing. So we can go in and use that black or dark gray to kind of loosely define those lines in there. So we have a diagonal line down here. I'm loosely outlining the edges of the tail feather on the bottom. So we have these lines. This is very loose outlining. So I have that paint color right on the tip of the brush. I'm stroking it very fast to create those lines. So in this area, we have kind of these little diagonal lines inside of that tail feather area. And we can have this be a little bit gray and painted in on the edge. Same with right here. So I'm using that gray to kind of add some gray feather texture, specifically on the wing. We wanna keep this mostly white, but we can use that gray to help create some color variation in different parts of our owl. And then we can go ahead and do some of the other splotches. So the little dots on the chest area are smaller and I made those a little bit more gray instead of, instead of using solid black. So this is kind of a medium gray color and I'm just doing little tiny marks. It's, there's a little bit of variety in these marks. So some are smaller, some are a little bit bigger they're kind of going in a curved sort of horizontal direction, kind of staggered, although it doesn't have to be perfect. And it goes all the way down. You can see that the gray, the shade of gray is still relatively kind of like a medium gray. It's not super dark at this point. The little dots on the wing area are going to be more of a solid black color. Um, if you're ready to paint the talons in, we can use the black. So I watered that black down slightly because this is a very small area. You can even use a paint pen for this, but you want to paint those in and you want to make sure the point of those are very, very um, pointed at the end. So if you loosen your black up, that kind of helps you get that looser stroke that goes more to a point. And then we can start painting our dots that are on the wing. So these ones are more of a solid black color versus the ones we did on the belly area, which were more of a gray color. So these are gonna stand out 
And again, little strokes that are kind of going curved create some variety. So some are bigger, some are smaller. They're almost like a, some are almost like a triangular shape where they might be pointed on the bottom. And they go down to the tail area. They kind of disappear and get smaller. And they're kind of in these curved sort of rows on the side of the wing. Add a few more up in the head area. There's no dots directly um, close to the eyes or the beak. So you can um, add as many dots as you want or not as many. Um, you can even take some of your gray and add some gray speckles on the side of the wing as well. But for the most part, the, the dots on the wing are, are super dark compared to the rest of them. The next thing I did was add a little highlight on the beak. So you want to rinse off your brush. You can do this with the four or the eight. This is the four round. And I just did a white little highlight on the upper right part of the beak. Next, I'm going to take the brush, the white and the four round brush, just pure solid white, no gray whatsoever right now. And I want to just outline the edge of my owl. Um, I'm kind of paying attention to where my pencil line is. So if any of that pencil line is still showing, I want to utilize, I want to cover that with the white. Um, you technically could erase it at this point, um, but I want to make sure that the edge of my owl is nice and sharp and defined. So no gray is showing on the outside edge, just outlining the outer parts of it. A little bit of white kind of in the tail area, but that's it. So I didn't outline the entire owl, just kind of the edge part that's overlapping our sky area. Next, we will be painting in that rustic looking post that our owl is perched on. So I am loading my palette with burnt umber. Switch to your three quarter flat brush. And so when you're loading these colors, we're gonna do kind of this triple load thing on our palette where we grab mostly brown, but then grab a little bit of black and a little bit of white, just kind of gently mix it together, but not all the way. You're gonna create this unblended kind of brown, grayish, rustic color. And you wanna go ahead and paint your post in vertical direction. So when you're using, you're using the full width of the brush and you're just dragging it down vertically. You want your brown, your white, your black to not blend all the way. So it's going to create this um, variation, this faux wood look by not blending it all the way. So it's gonna look streaky. Um, again, you wanna use mostly brown, little tiny bits of black and white, and that's gonna create that um, kind of grayish tone look to that wood. And so vertical format, um, vertical direction with your strokes, you just wanna be really careful with the bottom area of your owl. He's perched on the, the brown post, but we wanna go around the intricate detail of his talons. If you end up needing to go back and repaint the bottom part of your owl, that's okay. But I'm just doing the best I can to get this brush to go around his claws and then around the bottom parts. Um, after this, wood color dries, I can go ahead and paint some more feather texture to make it look like it's overlapping. We can take some white and just kind of do a few streaks of white, kind of dragging that down. Creates really pretty effect in the wood. Bring some of that other color upwards. I'm actually gonna drag this on the side of the canvas as well. 
Next, let's go ahead and rinse off our three quarter flat brush and set it to the side. And we're going to need either your eight round or your four round for this. We'll be painting the wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my four round for this. Load it into the black, load the paint just on the tip of the brush. And you wanna go ahead and paint those two curved lines for the wire. So this goes behind his tail feather and then off the edge of the canvas. And then we have the little kind of a, a loopy line that goes and kind of spirals around our black line. And I added a little bit of white to my brush as well to give that black a little bit of kind of a gray tone to it. And then we can do our little spikes. So these are just little X's that are very, very pointed on the end. So to get that line to be very pointed, you wanna use just the tip of the brush and just kind of release your pressure really fast to get that pointed line on the little spikes. And then I took that black and outlined the left part of the post. If the right part seems like it needs to be outlined as well, you can do that to help you really define that shape. I'm going to go over the claws again with the black. So I'm going to load a little bit of black onto my palette. Use that just the tip of the brush. And I'm just all going over that part to redefine it to make it look like that he's perched above the post. And maybe use that black to add some wood texture. So to do the wood texture, I'm using the round brush in the black and I'm doing some vertical lines kind of here and there. You can do little knots in the wood by painting like a little oval and then kind of these curved contouring lines around your little circle or oval shape. So I did two wood knots. You can be as detailed or as simplistic as you want with this. If your wood is dry or when it's dry, you can go back up in this area and have some of the feathers on the bottom of your owl overlap that wood, especially if you had to paint over some of it. So I'm just, I'm just taking the round brush and the white and did a little bit of feather texture. And also on the talons, I did a little bit of a highlight. So I just kind of took that white and just kind of gently sort of added a curved sort of stroke on the, each of the claws. And then we can take that white and add some snow texture that is so like little piles of snow that landed on the post. And I'm just taking my four round brush, adding that white just on the tip of the brush and doing little dots. So we have little pieces of snow on the wire as well, little tiny white dots, you're stippling your brush to create the little snow pieces on the top parts. Some might even be accumulating between some of the spikes on the wire. And then we can paint our little snow dots in the sky so we can take the round brush and the white and do little dots kind of scattered throughout the sky. So some of these are larger to create the larger strokes. You're actually kind of painting like one tiny little paint stroke. Um, we can I actually use my finger there to kind of define a, a more of a circular shape in the center of that sun. So it's super, super bright, or it could be a moon, but you're just creating a variety of little dots. Some are smaller, some are larger. They're kind of all going in that same diagonal direction. It's a, uh, I guess it's a windy day or night. So they're kind of, maybe they're flowing with the direction of the spirals in the sky. So you can ha go the, have them go in a circular direction or you can have them go in a diagonal direction. It's up to you. And you're just doing this all over. Some are smaller, some are larger. Next, we're gonna create that sort of grass texture that's in the background. Gives it some more interest in that area. You could skip this step 
if you want to kind of leave that area blank. But I'm basically using a number four round brush and I'm gonna use the blue gray color on my palette kind of mixed with white to make it lighter. And I'm just using the tip of that four round brush to create some loose, very abstract sort of grass strokes. You don't want this to be super, super dark to where it like kind of takes over, but um, it's kind of a medium color. The grass pieces that overlap the sky are obviously lighter, so they show up. Just very gently using the tip of the brush, kind of creating that grassy sort of iced, frozen shrubbery in the landscape. So I pretty much did that all over the painting using kind of a variety of white and blue gray. You can have some grass pieces that are overlapping the post a little bit. So you're just using the tip of the brush. It's very kind of lightly holding it like if you were sketching something with a pencil, you'd be holding it very lightly. So it's kind of the same way I'm holding the brush, just using the tip. The tip of this number eight round brush is very, very um, pointed and small. So that's how I'm able to create those smaller sort of grass blade strokes. Our painting is almost finished. The rest of this is pretty much just kind of fine tuning some detail work in this. So I'm done with the grass blades. I'm gonna go in and add a few more snow dots kind of in um, some of the area where I just painted the grass blades. So some snow dots could be overlapping in that area. So a few dots over here, a few dots kind of down close to the horizon line, maybe some that are kind of overlapping some of the grass. I didn't do any snow dots overlapping the owl. I didn't want to mess with that. But I did do a few more up in the higher area of the sky. I went and kind of outlined this part of the owl. Another thing that we can do is we can add some feather texture on the edges. So you don't have to do this, this is completely optional, but we can have some feather pieces just kind of sticking out. So right here, like little tiny diagonal lines kind of sticking out. Maybe they, some of them can kind of go in a curved direction. So paying attention to the edge, the um, outline of the owl. So right here, the little pieces just kind of curving and sticking out on the side. So that's a detail that you can add. And I did a few white vertical lines kind of in the wood area. Just very loosely, almost dry brush style, so not very thick, little, very, very translucent vertical strokes. And lastly, I went back with my eight round brush and just kind of loosely went over that line just on the bottom part to make that wire line stand out, not going over the snow that I painted on it, just the bottom piece. I went back over the little spikes again and added a little tiny one in there as well. This painting tutorial is coming to its inclusion. I hope that you enjoyed painting a snow owl with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.